Hey, what's up guys, Ophelia coming at you with another awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! archetype analysis and today's archetype is going to be on an archetype that's been around since the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh! but wasn't heavily featured until Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and it recently received quite a bit of support in Darksabers. So guys, today we're going to be talking about the Vampire archetype. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button so you're updated whenever I make new videos and leave some comments below so we can discuss it. Now, I, when I was looking at making this video, I noticed that vampires have two very distinct playstyles. One revolves around milling cards from your opponent's deck and the other revolves around destroying your opponent's monsters and summoning them to your field. Now I was going to separate the cards into those two like kind of streams but I figured it would be a lot easier to just go through as we normally do by level as a lot of the some of the older vampires do work do have very similar effects to the newer vampires and I think there's like one or two of the newer vampires have effects that are similar to the original vampires. So anyway guys, now that that is out of the way, let's get into the archetype. First off guys, at level 1 and level 2 we have Vampire Familiar and Vampire Retainer. Now the reason why we're looking at these two cards together is they're practically the exact same card. So Vampire Familiar is a dark level 1 zombie with 500 attack and 0 defense. And Retainer is a level 2 dark zombie with 1200 attack and 0 defense. Both of them have an ability that if they're special summoned at the cost of 500 life points, you can search your deck for a vampire card. In the sense of familiar, it allows you to search for monsters. And with retainer, it allows you to search for your spells and traps. What's interesting about familiar is it's the only card that I'm aware of in the archetype that doesn't restrict you to dark vampire monsters. So you can, you would be able to go search for a koala if it was still a vampire monster, but they are rather that. So the fact that it says dark vampire is really weird. Anyway, um, both of these monsters can also be special summoned from your graveyard by sending a vampire card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Now, both effects are hard once per turn, so you can't summon one with a special summon one, use its effects, search, send it to the grave, and then bring it out again and search again. The other downside of these two cards is if you bring them out by using their special summon effect, uh, and then if they leave the field, they get banished. Now, these two cards are unfortunately the only real consistent search the, the archetype has. The issue with them is they can't search on normal summon and they cost you 500 life points, but you still have to run them because they're the search you don't actually have. Next up guys, at level 3 is an old card, Vampire Baby. He's the only level 3 zombie monster in the archetype and he's a dark zombie with 700 attack and 1000 defense. At the end of the battle phase, if this card destroyed a monster by battle and sent it to the graveyard this turn, you can special summon that monster to your side of the field. Now this is an old vampire card. I think it was around GX era it came out, I'm not sure. I mean, it got reprinted in Joey's World, so it's obviously an old card. And this card, despite being old, actually it has an effect that's very similar to how the new vampires play. You wouldn't run him because he's a level 3, has literally no attack points, and the chance of him destroying something is basically not happening, and the other monsters that have the destruction return effects um, are a lot better. It's interesting to see that that destruction effect is not new to the unique to the new vampires. Some of the old vamp, one of the old vampires has it as well. At level four, we have Vampire Lady. She's a level four dark zombie with 1550 attack and 1550 defense. Each time she inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life points, you declare a card type spell trap or monster effect. Your opponent selects one card of that type from their deck and sends it to the graveyard. Now, obviously, in the old days, Lady was a staple at the deck because she's a level four dark zombie and she has an effect. But basically the same as Vampire Lords, and it combos really well with the Field Spell. The issue at this point is, like a lot of the old vampires with this strategy have, unless you really have the Field Spell and you're running their Field Spell, Vampire Kingdom, the mill effect is pretty useless because you're going to give opponent more resources in their grave, as well, although you declare the type, the Spell Trap or Monster, the, at the end of the day, your opponent decides exactly which of those, which card in that typing they actually send. And her attack points aren't very great for a level 4, uh, but of course with Kingdom she'll jump up to 2050, but you can run her if you want for nostalgia, but there's better level 4s to run. Like Vampire Sorcerer. Vampire Sorcerer is a dark level 4 zombie with 1500 attack and 1500 defense. He has 50 less in his attack and defense stat than, uh, than Lady, but his effects definitely make up for it. If this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by opponent's card, you can add a dark vampire monster or a vampire spell trap from your deck to your hand. And then you can banish him from your graveyard and then t to banish him from your graveyard, and then until the end of the turn, the next dark uh, vampire monster you normal summon this turn can be summoned without tributing. Considering most of the key members in the archetype are level 5 and level 6, with Vamp as well if you want to run her being a level 7, being able to normal summon monsters without tributing is really good in this deck because 
your key Mega Man playmakers are all level 5 and 6, which is a bit of an issue, but I guess they're keeping going off the fact of Vampire Lord, the original vampire, being a level 7. Sorcerer is worth running because he's able to search you spell trap and monsters, and he's also able to give you those tributes. So, very much worth running. Next up, guys, is Vampire Hunter. Now, Vampire Hunter isn't a vampire zombie. He is a level 4 Dark Warrior with 1600 attack and 1600 defense. And at the start of the damage step, if he battles a Dark Monster, you can destroy it. Now, he fits in with the theme of the Vampire Monsters, which is pretty cool. But um, he doesn't really do much with the deck at all. But remember, he is actually searchable by the support, uh, which is interesting because the support normally says Dark Vampire Monster, not a Dark Zombie, which is pretty interesting. Next up, guys, are Vampiric Koala and Vampiric Orcus. Now, these cards originally were called Vampire Koala and Vampiric Orcus. Uh, Vampiric Orcus is a level 4 Earth Plant with 1700 attack and 1000 defense. And when it is normal summoned, you can special summon one Desdendor, whatever the hell that is, from your hand. Um, yeah, we're not talking about this. Vampire Koala, on the other hand, is actually decent for its uh, stats. It's a level 4 Earth with 1800 attack and 1500 defense. If it's a beast, unfortunately, which would be nicer if it was a zombie because it actually has a heal effect for your life points. If this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by battle with a monster, you gain life points equal to the damage inflicted. Now, it doesn't give you as much life point regain as something like Domain, which is an insanely broken spell card for them, which we'll talk about when we get to it. Uh, but it would be nice if this guy remained either a vampire monster and a dark type so that you'd actually be able to have more ways to increase your life points. Because as we go through into these uh, newer vampires, you're going to realize that we're going to be paying a lot of life points to do a lot of really mediocre stuff, which is basically the archetype's biggest weakness if we, you know, we're ignoring the fact that they're basically all level five and six monsters, pretty much. Uh, next up, guys, is the original vampire himself, Vampire Lord. He is a level five dark zombie with 2,000 attack and 1,500 defense. When he inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you declare a spell, trap, or monster, and then your opponent sends that type of their card to their from their deck to the graveyard. Once per turn, during your next standby phase, after this card in your possession was destroyed and sent to the graveyard by the opponent's card effect, special summon it from the grave. Now, in terms of the older vampires, Lord's resurrection effect isn't actually bad. I mean, it is a bit slow that he has to come back in your next standby phase, but if he dies in your opponent's turn, like if they write Geki him in your opponent's turn, you can bring him back in your standby phase. He's a level 5, so he has some synergy with some of the other monsters in the archetype in terms of uh, Xyz plays. And he, of course, he's the Nostalgia and combos off really well with the Field Spell. So you can run him if you want. I definitely recommend running one if you are running a kingdom, a, a build based around Vampire Kingdom. But if you're running a newer strategy, you probably don't want to run him. Next up, guys, is Vampire Duke. So Vampire Duke, I think, is the one of the first retrains of Vampire Lord. Obviously, it has different stats, but they're based on the same historic vampire figure. So when this card is normal summoned, you get to you can set target one dark vampire monster in your graveyard and special summon it in face up defense. And then when this card and when Duke himself is special summoned, you can declare a card type monster spell trap. Your opponent immediately sends one card of that type from their deck to the graveyard. This effect is a hard once per turn, and it cannot be used for the XYZ material uh, of an XYZ summon except for the summon of a dark monster. So a lot of the vampires that came out in the mid, me like a few years back, all had this clause where they could only be used for the summon of a dark XYZ monster. But this guy basically brings about a vampire from your grave, and you bring out level 5, you get that really mediocre vampire XYZ. Yay. But being able to force your opponent to mill on special summon is actually pretty strong because a lot of the other, a lot of these older vampires only got their effects when they were normaled. And if you have Kingdom out already, you can bring this guy out. And um, there's a play, of course, with their trap, which we'll talk about when we get to it. But you play it, you play Kingdom, you bring it back, you bring this guy out through that combo. And then you force your opponent to immediately mill a card and you get to destroy something. So he has some place in the deck. Again, if you're playing around Kingdom, if you're not playing around Kingdom, you probably don't want to run him. Next up is Vampire Dragon. Vampire Dragon is a level 5 dark zombie with 2400 attack and 0 defense. When its tribute summon, when this tribute summon card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a level 4 or lower monster from your deck to your hand. This would be a lot better if you were playing around the old strategy and you're running Vampire Lady in your deck as well as Vampire Sorcerer. The issue with this card is it has to be tribute summoned to do something, so if you cheat it out with something like your Vampire Sorcerer, it won't be able to get its effect. It is pretty memey to play in other old school zombie decks um, if you're running like Pyramid Turtle, because this Pyramid Turtle can bring this thing out pretty interestingly. Um, but yeah, it, it looks cool, but you probably don't want to run it. 
Next up is Shadow Vampire, and Shadow Vampire is horrible, but in this archetype, it's actually pretty good. Uh, so it's a level 5 dark zombie with 2000 attack and 0 defense, and it cannot be used as a material for an XYZ summon except for the XYZ material of a dark monster. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a dark vampire monster from your hand or deck except himself, but monsters you control cannot attack for this turn except the special summoned monster. So first off, he has a limitation in what you can actually use him to XZ summon into, which is not great. Secondly, it has to be Tribute Summon to bring a monster out. It can't bring itself out. Luckily, that is not a once per turn. So if you do combo this off with Domain and you get two Shadow Vamps out, you can get an extra two Vamps. But the issue is that the only monster that can attack is the one you summon. So that's pretty much the biggest weakness of that card. Unfortunately, you do have to run it because it's one of the only pluses the Archetype has. Next up is the level 5 Vampire Grimson. Vampire Grimson is a level 5 Dark Zombie with 2000 attack and 1400 defense. If a monster or monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can pay 1000 life points for each monster that would be destroyed instead. However, the downside of this card is you must protect every single monster that would be destroyed if you use this effect. So if you're probably, basically, if you're going to lose 5 monsters to Uragaki and you want to use Grimson to save one of them, you're paying 5000 life points and probably losing the game. At the end of the battle phase, if this card destroyed any monsters by battle, you can special summon them from the graveyards to the field. Now, Grimson does give nice native protection for an archetype that practically has no destruction protection. And she also has the ability to resurrect monsters from grave, uh, from your opponent's grave if she destroys them by battle. So she has some nice pluses to warrant out her negative, the negative of her protection effect. But if you use her correctly, she can be a decent one-off in your deck. Next up is the best level 5 monster in the archetype, Vampire Freylin. So she's a level 5 dark zombie with 600 attack and 2000 defense. When a monster declares an attack, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. So if your opponent declares a direct attack against you, uh, you can special summon her out whenever you want like that. Pretty cool. This effect is a hard once per turn, however, but that's still a pretty good way to get a 2k beat, 2k wall out on the field pretty easily. And it's a really good considering she's a level 5. As well as that, you can, uh, if once per battle, if your zombie monster battles an opponent's monster, during damage calculation as a quick effect, you can pay life points in multiples of 100, max 3000, and then the battling monster gains that much attack during damage calc only. And at the end of the battle phase, if she destroys a monster, you get it at the, you get it at the end of the battle phase. So she's the best level 5 monster in the entire archetype, being able to special summon herself out, give power, and have the destruction effect, and she can summon herself in your opponent's turn if they battle you. Definitely worth running at three copies for that free special level five and that on really interesting on field honest because it is a quick effect and you can choose exactly how much you want to pay, which is pretty cool. And it's not a massive cost. I mean, it's however much you want to pay to give power. So, you, And if you have your um, spell out, you can always gain some of that back, which is pretty cool. Next up as level 6 is uh, Vampire Red Baron. It's a level 6 zombie with 2400 attack and 1000 defense. Once per turn you can pay 1000 life points and target one monster your opponent controls and one other vampire monster you control with switch control of them. At the end of the battle phase, if this card destroyed any monsters by battle, you can special summon them from the graveyards to your field. Now what makes this card interesting is you can actually give your opponent your weaker vampires. So if you want to and you're stuck with a familiar or a retainer on field, you can always give them to your opponent and then you can swing with this guy into those. And you get their monster and they get your weak little vamp. And then at the end of the battle phase, you can special summon them back from either player's graveyard. So what makes this card good, I mean, if you're destroying your retainer that you've given your opponent, you get special summon retainer back, you can pay 500 and you can search again. So this guy's definitely worth running in at least one or two copies because he fits the theme really well and actually has good ways to use this gimmick. Next up, guys, is the level 6 of Vampire Curse. It's a Dark Zombie with 2k attack and 800, and 800 defense. And when it's destroyed by balance into the graveyard, you can pay 500 life points. If you do, you special summon it during the next turn standby phase. When this card is special summoned this way, it gains 500 attack. Now, this card has some decent recovery and decent ways of coming back from the grave to the field. The issue, it's similar to Vampire Lord, obviously, but you have to wait for your standby phase. So it's only really relevant if your opponent destroys it in their turn, and it has to be destroyed. Uh, this one is destroyed by battle, uh, whereas Lord is destroyed by card effect, which is pretty interesting. But it does gain attack every time you uh, does gain um, 500 attack if you bring it back, which is pretty cool. Next up, guys, is Scarlet Scourge. He is the best level six monster in the entire archetype. 2200 attack and defense. 
and an effect when he's normal or special summoned. So if he's normal or special summoned, you can pay 1k, then target a vampire monster in your graveyard except himself, special summon it, however it cannot attack this turn. This effect is a hard one per turn. At the end of the battle phase, if this card destroyed any monsters by battle, you can special summon them from the graveyards to your field. So basically he works as your combo extender, I guess. You can bring back your uh, searches from your graveyard to go ahead and search for more cards. You can bring out something like Freylin or Red Baron or anything like that, or even Grimson, uh, just to be able to continue some plays out there. He can bring Vamp out, which is an easy way to cheat Vamp out onto the field as well, because she's a level 7. Definitely worth running at 3 copies, because he's like one of the main playmakers you or combo extenders you actually have in your entire archetype. Next up, guys, is the level 6 Vampire Grace. Now, Vampire Grace on the surface looks pretty bad, but she has some okay effects if you use her correctly. So she's a level 6 Dark Zombie with 2,000 attack and 1,200 defense, and when the level 5 or higher Zombie Monster is special summoned to your side of the field by the effect of a Zombie Monster while this card is in your graveyard... <gasps> You can pay 2k and special summon her from your graveyard. This effect is a hard once per turn. Once per turn, you can declare a card, uh, card type, monster spell trap, your opponent sends one card of that type from their deck to the graveyard. Obviously, she's a staple in older vampire decks, being that you don't have to deal battle damage to force your opponent to mill, but you're paying, like, 2k to bring her out just for a 2k wall, and, like... It would be great if the, you know, you could declare the, the declare a card type is a quick effect, but unfortunately it's not. So honestly, it's up to you if you want to run this. I'm personally against it unless you really are solid on running this card. But paying 2k to bring this out when you can just bring it out for 1k with Scourge is pretty eh. But if you use Scourge to bring out something else, I mean, you pay 2k, you bring her out. But you're paying 3k life points to get, like, an average monster and whatever you bring off Scourge. Next up, guys, is level 7 Vampire Vamp. She was basically the boss monster of the deck, with the exception of Grace being a boss monster, I guess. I feel Vamp is a better boss monster than Grace. Uh, once per turn, when this card or a Vampire Monster is normal summoned to your field, you can target a face-up monster your controls whose attack is higher than this card's, equip it to her. She gains attack equal to the combined original attack of the monsters equipped to her by this effect. If she's sent to the graveyard while equipped with the cards by this effect, special summon her. So she's actually pretty decent, and I would actually recommend running at least one of her. If you use her to make Saka and she's equipped with something, you get her back for free. And the fact that, yes, she has to be normal summoned to get her effect like most of these other ones, but at least her effect can go off if you normal summon another vampire. And being able to leave cards like, and of course she's level 7, two tributes hard to, hard to get her out on the field. But there's lots of ways to cheat her out, like Scarlet Scourge, or particularly Sorcerer, if you want to get her effect off straight away. As it doesn't, Sorcerer doesn't read one less tribute, he just reads without tributing, so you get a free vampire vamp. I like running her, her stats are pretty bad for a level 7, and none other, no, there is no other level 7 monster in the archetype. But I think she's pretty adorable, and I mean, I like running her, but at the end of the day, that's up to you. Next up, guys, is the level 8 Vampire Genesis. So if Genesis didn't have such a convoluted summoning condition, it would actually be worth running in the sense that its effect is not bad, but its effect is kind of outdated in the sense of how it's worded. So basically, it cannot be normal summoned or set. It must first be special it must be special summoned. Not first, it can only be special summoned by from your hand by banishing a vampire lord you control and cannot be summoned by other ways. What? Once per turn, you can discard one zombie type monster to the graveyard, then target a zombie monster in your graveyard with a level less than the discarded zombie monsters, special that target. If it was literally discard a zombie, special summon the zombie, or discard a dark vampire, summon a dark vampire from grave, this card would actually be somewhat worth considering. Because it's so easy to deal with, being it has 3k attack and it has no protection for itself, your opponent just needs something like a strike and it's like big GG or like any like any any destruction card but is this card useless and you minus you technically would have minus three being able to have to tribute summon your vampire lord then banish your vampire lord to summon this so don't run it unless you want to make a meme deck that turbos this out it's a level eight and there's no other level eights in the deck in the archetype so don't bother in my opinion Next up is, going on to the extra deck, is the rank 5 Crimson Knight Vampire Bram. It is a uh, rank 5 Dark Zombie with 2500 attack and 0 defense. It requires 2 level 5 zombie monsters. 
you can detach one XYZ material from from her from him to target one monster in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon that target to your field, but only that monster can attack for the rest of this turn. This effect is a hard once per turn. Once per turn, during the standby phase of the next turn, this card was destroyed by opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, special summon him in defense. Now, why are we summoning this thing back in defense? I never understood why this card has that ability. There's no rank up for this card as far as I'm aware, at least not in the vampire archetype. There may be some other generic zombie that you can go into with this, I don't know. The fact that he comes back as a blocker or as a defensive wall is fine, except that he has zero defense points. He's basically a XYZ version of Shadow Vampire, which Shadow Vampire is probably better because you can summon monsters that you can monsters from your own deck. Unless you really want that uh, monster in your opponent's graveyard, that'll win you the game, I guess. But I don't really like it, so you'd probably only run him at one, um, just because he doesn't really do anything. I think it'd be a lot better if uh, the next XYZ monster would actually be able to be used by um, just overlaying this guy. Uh, because, you know, bringing him back in defense mode actually means something. In. But, unfortunately, Sheridan does not have that ability. So Sheridan is a level uh, rank 6 dark zombie monster with 2600 defense and 1000 defense. It requires two or more level 6 monsters. If you use a monster or monsters with a level that is owned by your opponent for the Xyz summon of this card, treat it as level 6. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, then target a card your opponent controls, send it to the graveyard, Send it to the graveyard, and then that's it for that effect. And then once per turn, if a monster cards or cards is sent from your field to your opponent's graveyard by a card effect, or a monster is destroyed by battle and sent to your opponent's graveyard, you can detach one XYZ material from this guy, special summon one of those monsters to your field in defense position. So this guy is actually pretty troll and makes really funny use of the whole I kill your monster and I get it mechanic. So you, the downside of this is they have to have levels. I think this guy would be a lot more troll to bring out if you could destroy your opponent's Link Monsters or your opponent's XYZs and use them to make him. Unfortunately, that's not the case, making him very weak. The ability to send cards from your opponent's field to the graveyard is strong, but it's only in your turn, and this guy's not really going to stay around too long. And of course, you can protect him with Grimson, but do you really want to? I mean, he's one of the best monsters in the entire archetype, but... That's not saying much, considering the archetype is pretty average on its own. Their last extra deck monster is the newest, is uh, Vampire Sucker. So they have their own Link monster, which gives them some uh, credit to being still somewhat playable in the game. She is a Link to Zombie with 1600 attack. She requires two zombies and points bottom left and bottom right. If a if you attribute summon a monster or monsters for uh you contribute zombie monsters your opponent controls, even though you do not control them. And then you can only use each of the following effects of Psycho once per turn. You can target a monster in your opponent's graveyard, special summon it to your opponent's field and defense, but it becomes a zombie type. And it's her other effect, which what makes her really good, is if a zombie monster or monsters is special summoned from either graveyard, draw a card. So what makes her good is you're able to special summon monsters from your opponent's graveyard to their field, they become zombies, you draw, and then you contribute that monster to summon out one of your bigger zombies. She has nice effects that work with vampires pretty well. She combos insanely well with Zombie World if you choose to run Zombie World in your deck over um, Vampire Kingdom. But running Vampire Kingdom is still fine, as she can still get you the draw if you bring out your own monsters from their own effects. So definitely worth running in the deck because it allows you to have potentially two brands on the field or a brand and a Sheridan, or two Sheridans on the field or a Sheridan and a brand if you really want to make brand for some stupid reason or any other monster you want to make. So definitely worth running in the deck at at least two or three copies. Next up guys, moving on to their spells and traps. First up is Vampire Desire. Desire has two effects and you can only activate one, you act, choose to activate one of the effects and you can only activate one Desire per turn. So you target a face-up monster you control and send a vampire from your deck to the graveyard with a different level from the monster you picked. If you do, the monster you picked becomes the level of that monster in the graveyard until the end of the turn. Its other effect is to target a vampire monster in your graveyard, send a monster you control to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon the targeted monster. You can So this card is actually pretty good. It's an easy it's basically a foolish burial within the archetype itself, and it's also potentially a monster reborn, although you do have to send something from the field. It doesn't say you have to send a vampire from your field to the grave to bring the one back, so you can always send one of the cards you've taken from your opponent as a uh, as you know as cost to bring a vampire back so definitely worth running it at least two or three copies because uh, it actually does a lot for you and of course given it is a vampire card like everything here we can always discard them to bring retainer 
or familiar out from the graveyard to the field. Next up, guys, is their, most, is their insanely powerful Vampire Domain. It's a continuous spell that once per turn, at the cost of 500 life points, during your main phase, you can normal summon an extra Vampire monster in addition to your normal, regular normal summon or set. There's actually much needed support for an archetype that is so heavily based around tribute summoning. It's actually really nice that we got something like this. And then you get this effect even if your opponent gets rid of it. Then each time your Vampire monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you gain the damage as... Uh, life points that's really good considering you're paying so much damage life points to actually use these effects it's nice that they actually have a way to heal themselves definitely must run at three copies next up guys is their field spell vampire kingdom so zombie monsters gain 500 attack during damage calculation only once per turn when a card or cards is sent from your opponent's deck to the graveyard target one card on the field send a dark vampire monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard and if you do destroy the target Combos really well with the older vampire monsters like Lord, it's particularly well with Duke, especially when we'll take a look at the uh, card that actually cheats Vampire Kingdom out. And being able to destroy cards in your opponent's field and also being a foolish burial is really, really handy. What's even better is this card can actually be cheated out with the trap card Vampire Takeover. So if you have no card in your field zone and all face-up monsters you control at least one, uh, zombie types, you can activate the Vampire Kingdom directly from your deck, then you can special summon a Dark Vampire Monster from your graveyard in face-up defense, and you can only activate one Vampire Takeover per turn. So the way this really troll combo works is if your opponent's got a problematic monster you actually want to get rid of, and you're playing this little combo here, you can activate this, you can activate Vampire Takeover, which will set, which will set Vampire Kingdom straight to the field. Then, using Vampire Takeover's effect, you can special summon Duke straight out from the graveyard, force your opponent to mill a card, then you can destroy it with Vampire Kingdom, and then mill another Dark Vampire monster you want from your deck to the graveyard. So, pretty cheesy combo you can do there, but it is still something you can pull off, which is pretty cool. And being able to activate a field spell from your deck can always be really handy, especially if you're, the difference is like 500, or if you've got a Freylin out, and you can do some really cool combos, like you can special summon Freylin, and play Takeover, and then you can do, you know, give them 500 power, and then give them power from Freyland. So, lots of sy synergies with Takeover you can actually use if you build your deck around Kingdom. Next up is Vampire Awakening. Vampire Awakening is a normal trap that can only be activated once per turn, and allows you to special summon a Vampire Monster from your deck. It doesn't say ignoring its summoning conditions, and it's destroyed at the end of the turn, so, I mean, it would be nice to be able to bring out Genesis with this card, and then use Genesis effect. Because Genesis is going to die anyway, but doesn't say ignoring summoning conditions, but it's still worth running at one or two copies, because it's another easy way to cheat out those high-level vamps, including Scarlet Scourge and Sucker, and, or Grace. Particularly if you bring out Scarlet Scourge, you can go ahead and continue your plays by paying a cane summon something out from Graveyard. Probably worth running at at least two copies. And their final spell trap is Vampire Domination. When the spell trap... Car, spell trap or monster effect is activated as long as you control a vamp you can negate the activation if you do destroy the card and if that card was a monster you gain life points equal to its original attack unfortunately this card can only be activated once per turn but considering how much life points you're paying for this deck it's nice that they have their own counter trap that basically negates pretty much anything and you can gain life points equal to the effect so kind of like not reducing the need to play something like a judgment in the deck which is pretty cool the issue with domination is it can't negate summons so if your opponent goes ahead and makes something like um makes a monster that's going to be there over your whole field you can't use domination to get rid of it but if they try to kill you with like black rose or something you can just domination black rose's effect and you'll be fine and you'll gain life points equal to black rose's effect so the domination is definitely a three of in every vampire deck because it's so generic for the archetype it's, it says just control a vampire even though sheridan's in the artwork you don't and retainer and vampire familiar you don't actually need any other vampires on any specific vampires on the field to use it but that's it guys, that's every card that vampires actually have access to in the TCG and OCG. Now there are two anime exclusive cards that vamp that were used by Camula in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I'm going to go over them pretty quickly because we have a few minutes left. First off is Vampire Bats. So Vampire Bats is a level 3 zombie with 800 attack and 1200 defense. It gives 200 attack points to all uh, Camula's zombie type monsters. And if it is face up on the field, it would be destroyed. You get to send a Vampire Bat from your deck to the graveyard instead. This card doesn't exist. Probably good it doesn't. 
because it's really outdated now. If it said send any dark vampire monster to keep it alive, I think it'd be a little too busted. So that's probably why this card doesn't exist. Her other card isn't really a vampire card, but it is pretty well known. It's Illusion Gate. So this card is basically a Raigeki and a Monster Reborn in one, and the only cost was for her to offer a soul to the Sacred Beast if she lost. It wipes the opponent's field and special summons a monster from their graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions. Uh, yeah, this card is insane and probably never will be printed. Though I think they could do something pretty gimmicky as they have actually printed Golden Castle of Strongberg, which was probably the most broken card in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, uh, with the exception of, like, Divine Serpent, the Divine Serpent or whatever that Darts had, anyway. Whatever, this card could get printed, and if it did, I'd like to see it have some synergy with Vampires, as Golden Castle of Strongberg has synergy with, um, the Fairy Tales for Leon's Monsters. But anyway, guys, that's it for the archetype analysis. Hope you enjoyed it. I am potentially working on a deck profile. I'm trying to build one around Vampire Kingdom because I like the whole destruction mill effect. It's not super consistent. As you guys know, I do like to play more fun decks. If you haven't already, guys, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the other archetype analysis that we have up. Leave some comments, and I'll catch you guys for my next video.